Hi, I'm Dan Halpern, and I'm here to tell you what we've learned over the last 11 years of building Batfish. Batfish started as a project at Microsoft, USC, and UCLA in 2012, and the paper was published at NSDI 2015. In 2017, Ari Ratul and Todd founded Intentionet, and the rest of us joined, and we also began uh, building Batfish as an open source project. We spent the last six years deploying this technology, both at enterprises and the open source community, and this talks about what we've learned in that time. Today, Batfish is an open source project with more than 1,700 users. It's used in production at more than 50 companies and organizations. It today forms the heart of Oracle Cloud's Network Path Analyzer, which lets customers analyze the reachability and security of their networks. And it served the research community as a foundation for more than 20 papers using its source code. In 2022, the maintainers of Batfish joined AWS where we are putting these technologies into production to make the network even better. And of course, the real success for any open source project today is getting chat GBT hallucinations in your bug reports. So when we were working on Batfish at the beginning, there was this new idea in networks of data plane verification. The idea was if you had a snapshot of the network state, dump the ribs and fibs from all the boxes, you could leverage a new class of automated reasoning techniques to find bugs in the network. The idea behind Batfish though, was to actually try to do this proactively. If you can ask, what if I change this routing policy or what would happen if this link failed and find those bugs, you can actually make sure that you caught them and fixed them before they ever actually affected the network. The insight that Fish had was that we could do this if we started from the configuration and we're still able to produce these bug reports. To do this, we built a four stage pipeline. In the first step, we parsed the device configurations and we built a model of the device. This is which interfaces it has, what routing protocols it's using, how those processes are configured, static routes, and things like that. We then use data log to do a actual routing simulation that would run the control plane and produce the ribs and fibs in the network. Data log let us express how the devices talk to each other and with stratification could actually handle the way that routes learn and are updated um, as you know, better routes are learned. We then used data log to express how packets are forwarding and Z3 would actually either check some property of interest or find a flow that violated it. We would then feed this flow back into the logic block system, which would tell us uh, concretely how this flow went through the network, explain why this was a bug, and could loop this back to which specific routes and routing configuration actually led to this bug introduction in the network. So in 2023, actually the pipeline really hasn't changed. It's still the test of time. However, every single one of these four stages is now completely different. Uh, by re-implementing all of these stages, Batfish is now 1,500 times faster than it was originally, and it handles at least 400 times larger networks than it used to. We've also added a new front-loaded stage that helps us make sure that Batfish's uh, models are reliable. So this is a pretty short talk, and to get all the details, you'll have to read the paper. But I wanted to briefly touch on five of our key lessons. The first one is that Datalog really got us off the ground, but it didn't scale with us. And we ran into really three key challenges. The first thing is expressiveness. So in real networks, they do things like add calls together or use regular expressions over communities or AS paths. And this was really hard to express even in extended Datalog. Um, if we did make it work, it was hard to maintain as we tried to add new features. The next was performance. By design, Datalog is a high level language that is designed to hide the details of how things are executed. But execution really matters in networking. For example, you really want OSPF to converge to a set of best paths before you share those paths with BGP. Otherwise, you're gonna have a lot of wasted work and a lot of unnecessary facts that you have to keep around. Finally, we ran into some networks where convergence was a problem. In the real world, everything worked fine, but in the stratified data log model where everything happens in lockstep, the network would never converge. We need to find ways to break this cycle. Finally, the solution to all this was to use imperative code instead of data log. We rewrote the writing simulation in Java and also the explanation. And this let us provide both performance, maintainability, expressiveness, and solve these challenges with convergence. The next lesson was that now that the data plane was really fast, the verification technology no longer kept up. What we learned was that BDDs were a great solution to this. So we replaced our Z3 library with a custom BDD engine. This engine is really simple. It's 4,800 lines of code, including several extensions we've added to better support network verification. And it's performant. 
Today, Batfish can verify properties over thousands of node networks in tens of milliseconds. Now, one of the things we kept hearing when we were trying to build Batfish was this is an impossible problem. And the reason is Cisco is going to produce a minor patch version and that's going to you know, totally change the semantics of your model and you're going to have perfect bug compatibility with Cisco or it's going to be useless. In our experience, this really didn't happen. So vendors would be out of a job if the configuration you used yesterday meant something totally different tomorrow. Backing up config, rebooting a box, reapplying the old config, expecting it to work, that's what happens every day. The real challenge is undocumented semantics. When users make bugs, they might do something like uh, use a wrap map in a BGP import policy that isn't configured on the box. What happens? The answer is it's different for every vendor. It's different for every construct. It's often different for how those constructs are used, like import policy and export policy might have different behavior. To solve this and other um, use cases of making sure the model matches the network, we have this extra stage where we you know, model out important parts of the network, be it misconfigurations or interesting topologies, and make sure that Batfish produces the same results. In this way, we're able to have really trustworthy, reliable models. Now, usability is hard, but um, it was a really interesting lesson for us. So network engineers are used to things like trace route. Log into a box with a very particular place in the network and source IP, and then you know, do a ping or do a trace route and see you know, a specific destination IP and see if it works. So when you give them a Swiss army knife, you know, give me any sort of path constraints and packet constraints and location constraints, maybe some waypointing. Um, it turns out to be really hard to use. We often found users that would, for example, think they were proving a positive property, but actually they were simply finding a single representative trace rather than proving that all traces succeeded. There was a second layer of ambiguity here, which is users would have these mental properties like, oh, all my A should be able to reach all of my Bs. But what does this really mean? Sometimes it is every A should reach every B. Sometimes it's every A should reach some B or it's local B or all the local Bs. You know, there were lots of different quantifiers here and partitionings here that were implied by this statement. To solve this, we actually added a whole bunch of custom assertions for each use case, both making sure the software technology was used correctly and providing sort of these natural language sentences and uh, inputs and outputs that would match the user's property they were actually trying to test concretely. Finally, we built Bathless as, as a data plane verification tool, but it turned out that deep configuration modeling really has many applications. So in order to build our vendor independent model, we actually have to also model, say, the Juniper config really well, which means that we handle the BGP inheritance or things like that, that is kind of non-obvious and hard to get out with the kinds of ad hoc text, grep, and regex based tools people typically use in house. This meant they could actually have sound soundness in analyzing those configs, and we found a lot of bugs that way. The other thing is that the vendor independent model became kind of a one-stop shop for a lot of people. They could just throw all the configs in the directory and instantly have an IPAM database or make sure MTU was configured uniformly or find bugs in the way BGP sessions are configured across devices. So, um, you know, there's a lot of details in the paper that we don't have time for in this talk. So you should go read it to learn about the design of the key components, a whole bunch of user stories showing how this technology turned out to be useful or challenging to use, and of course the performance data to back up the claims I've made. If I could give one piece of advice to this research community, it's that we should really tackle the unsolved challenges, which are things like control plane complexity, lots of features, uh, transient behavior, and of course the accessibility of these results to the users that need them. Honestly, you know, simple kind of OSPF plus BGP networks with simple policies, with no aggregation, with no communities, with no regular expressions, right? These things are pretty much solved today and we need to start taking on these other factors if we're going to have value in the real world. Finally, if this is work is interesting to you, we're hiring. So, you know, come join us at AWS as we try to tackle the, all the challenges putting this technology to work to make the world's best network better. Thanks for your time.